After every shooting, a mass shooting, a school shooting, talks about the National Rifle Association and gun lobbying come into play. But what's unique about the school shooting in Uvalde is that it was so quickly followed by the NRA's annual convention in Houston, just a few hundred miles away from where a shooter killed 19 children. I think that the, the merger of those two, the, the slaughter and then this convention, drew a lot of attention to the gun lobby from both Second Amendment rights advocates and also from gun control activists. So the NRA still holds a fair amount of clout among the conservative community. And in addition, there are a number of other organizations that are also spending heavily both on lobbying and campaign donations as part of the gun rights fight. So, you know, the NRA is not alone in this space. I'm David Siders, a national political correspondent at Politico. We're going to talk about the NRA and the gun lobby's influence in the gun control debate. We also spoke with our finance and money reporter, uh, my colleague Haley, uh, to talk about the money side. From that Open Secrets data, we see that gun rights groups have spent more than $2 million on lobbying so far this year. In 2021, Biden's first year in office, gun rights groups spent nearly $16 million on, on lobbying. The last time that gun rights groups lobbying spending popped $15 million, was after the shooting in Newtown, Connecticut at Sandy Hook Elementary School. The record lobbying spending from gun rights groups in 2021 coincided with the inauguration of a president who had committed to significant gun control measures on the campaign trail. Among those measures was an assault weapons ban. It remains to be seen whether gun rights groups will top their 2021 lobbying spending in 2022. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. The clear reason that there isn't legislation advancing in, in Congress is because the Democratic majority, which is the constituency for gun control, uh, is so narrow and, and can't overcome a filibuster. So you could frame it two ways. It's either too few Democrats or it's Republican intransigence. And, and really it's Republican senators who oppose stricter gun control measures. The significance of the gun lobby is apparent in the lack of action on enacting stricter gun laws. The Open Secrets data also tells us that the NRA, both for individuals and PAC donations, has spent more than 200,000 so far this cycle in the 2022 midterms. It'll be interesting to see how lobbying spending from gun rights groups changes after what we've seen in Texas and in New York. It's not just whether the NRA gives a million dollars to whatever candidates in a given cycle. It's also how they rate those candidates. You know, are they A or B or C NRA candidates and how voters then perceive them in that broader climate. In 2000, the NRA gave campaign contributions that totaled upwards of 3 million. In 2020, which was a major presidential election, the NRA's campaign contributions totaled less than 800,000 that year you know, signaled some sort of decline in its spending power. The NRA has been weakened in the past several years. There was infighting among leadership and there's you know, a failed bankruptcy effort. But I think politically their influence is, I would not say has degraded. In fact, it may be more than before. And that is because it's effectively seen the gun control debate move into a culture war debate. This is really about the left's culture war against gun owning and supporting Americans. That's what it's about. And it's about refusing to acknowledge the fundamental reason and the purpose for the Second Amendment. A Politico and Morning Council poll taken a day after the Texas shooting showed 65% of respondents supporting stricter gun control laws in the U.S. Here you have in Uvalde, 19 children and, and two adults killed, they're digging graves, and you go to the NRA, and one after another, the conference attendees will say, that's a tragedy, I feel for those people, and yet they also view themselves as a set of victims at the moment. They argue that they are being you know, set upon by the left trying to take their guns. If you're looking for a measure of the NRA's influence, just look at who shows up at their conference. It's Ted Cruz, the, the senator. It's uh, Christy Nome, the governor of South Dakota. Both of those people may run for president. And beyond that, former President Trump, the head of the Republican Party. 
From this day forward, every school in America should have a police officer or an armed resource officer on duty at all times. There's a reason that they come. They need to speak to that electorate. Things entirely hyper-partisan now and hyper-polarized so that the NRA is, is now effectively a wing of the conservative movement. This time, we have to take the time to do something. And this time, it's time for the Senate to do something. There typically is enthusiasm or optimism right after a shooting or some kind of change in gun policy, and rarely does it happen. Because right now, if you look at Washington, I mean, the, the forces that are controlling the actors in this negotiation do not lend themselves to coming up with some kind of bipartisan solution. President Biden has come under some criticism from gun control activists for not taking more forceful executive actions. There is some hesitancy, I think, at the White House to move on executive actions while these negotiations are going on in Congress because more meaningful action can be taken in Congress. And there's a fear that taking executive action could push the lawmakers negotiating back to their corners.